big, and so um, to have 14 and a half minutes to tell it is tricky. First of all, I'm home, which is exciting, and yes, I'm in my pajamas. Um, I live in Colorado now and uh, came back to Detroit yesterday, and it was really cool to be back here and, and be part of this, and I'm really honored and thrilled to be here. And I have to tell you that I saw my very first classical music concert right here, so what I'd like to do, if it's okay with you guys, is I'm just going to take a picture really quick because this is just super cool for me to be standing here and have my own audience. It's really awesome. So, um, okay, and I also am super, super happy to be part of this great cause um, that, that we're raising money for, which is children and the arts and sciences and education, because ultimately that's how I... Um, became a successful entrepreneur, which again is just a miracle for me. Um, the thing is, what I want to talk to you about today is that you got to try. Um, no, matter, no matter what your ideas are, I think it's really, really important that you not allow yourself to feel as if it's just too much against the odds for you to succeed. That um, your idea is way too wacky or, or crazy and nobody else has done it and so you can't do it. So today I really want to talk to you again about um, beating the odds and how maybe you have an idea um, somewhere in the back of your mind and you've been thinking that you're not going to succeed because nobody else has done it. Um, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about my story first. Um, I'm, well, I guess the whole time. Um, I'm a stay-home mom and that was what I really always wanted to do. I wanted to have children. I wanted to um, be with them. And so the first year that my daughter was born, that was what I did, which as any of you who are parents understand, um, you spend a lot of time in your pajamas. <laughs> and if you don't go to an office, of course you're working as hard as you can because when you're a good parent, a good stay-home parent, you're, you're working really hard. But you are wearing your pajamas a lot. A lot of my work, um, almost all of the really important work I've done in my life, I've done in my pajamas. So when I went into my closet in Colorado and said, what am I gonna wear to this event, which of course was my first question, when I was invited to come here, what am I going to wear? <laughs> I looked at my closet and I was like, wow, all I really have are pajamas. So here we go. <laughs> um, so, oh, I have to get my clicker. Sorry. I'm, again, I'm not a real technology person. Um, let me tell you about Baby Einstein. Um, for those of you who don't know, you saw a little piece of it. That was from Baby Van Gogh, which is my favorite video of the videos that I made. And my idea as a stay-at-home mom was really spurred by this feeling that I had that I could not listen to Barney. That, that <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, I had a daughter and she was one and she was curious about television, but again, you know, I, that, you know that was just something that wasn't gonna happen in my house. And so I started thinking about what could I do? What would she like to look at? Um, and, I, and I knew what she liked to see from spending time with her, and I knew what I liked to hear, um, which, you know, I, I guess I could have put on The Clash or The Smiths or something, but um, I thought it would probably be better for her to hear classical music. And so I came up with this idea for Baby Einstein, um, and I didn't even really know it was going to be a company. I literally borrowed video equipment, set it up in my basement, and shot a bunch of stuff that my own daughter liked looking at, which was um, sometimes the family cat, and sometimes, you know, a puppet on my hand or um, a, a stacking ring toy that we've all seen if we've had babies. Um, did a bunch of shots of that, and here I was with a video and then set it to classical music that um, I hired a friend of mine who was a musician to produce. And so put it all together, and again, I don't have a lot of time, so I'm going to kind of make this as quick as I can. Um, but I, I did sit down at my kitchen table and... I drew this logo, and this logo, I can't even believe I'm saying this, but this logo is actually on millions of products now around the world, and I did draw it at my kitchen table with my daughter's crayons. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? So, um, so again, in terms of the odds, you know, what are the odds of something like that happening? They're pretty small, but again, I, I'm trying to, to let you all know that you should never look at life that way, you know? I mean, when you can beat the odds, it's just the most miraculous feeling when you do something that um, people might have said you couldn't do. So you gotta try. Um, I didn't have a business plan when I started Baby Einstein. I had one goal. I had a video, and I wanted it to be in 
a store. I thought, okay, what would be a good store for me? And at the time, it was a chain of stores called The Right Start, which is where I bought a lot of videos, or I bought a lot of products for my own baby. So I decided to go, which I'd never done before, I decided to go to a trade show. Um, I knew that there would be retailers at the trade show that would be looking for products unique and that were for the children's market. So I decided to go to the International Toy Fair, which is enormous. Um, I had never been to a trade show. I didn't know how big it was going to be. I went with a video in my hand, and I um, walked around. I got into this trade show. There were 20,000 people there, and I walked around that trade show looking for somebody with a Right Start name tag. I just walked around like this, just looking. <laughs> every person I walked by, and then when I found the person with the Right Start name tag, I went like cuckoo, and um, I think I scared her. I like ran up to her, I'm like, this is the perfect video for you, you have to have this in your store. So um, I got it into her hand, and so again, sort of the odds of that happening were pretty small, um, and she took the video home over the weekend, and she watched it with a baby, and guess what? She called the next day and said, you know, we think we want to try this in our stores. There's nothing like it, so it was totally unique, um, odds are it's probably not going to do very well. But you know what? It did. So um, it, was, it was pretty amazing. And why did it do well? I mean, it had no marketing support. It had, um, I had no money for a commercial or an ad or anything like that. There was really no internet to speak of at the time. I mean, there was, but people weren't using it nearly to the degree that they are now. Um, and it was all word of mouth for me. It was amazing. It was parents telling parents, my baby's teething. When I pop in the Baby Einstein video, she stops crying. Every parent wants it. <laughs> so so um, anyway, so it was, it was literally word of mouth that helped me build this brand, and it was, it was really incredible. So the crazy idea went right. Um, I will tell you that I had so much fun that that was kind of the other thing that was, I don't want to say against the odds, I mean, but I loved what I did. It was so cool. I was putting puppets on my hand and like getting under a table and doing puppet shows <laughs> and making a lot of money. That was really cool. <laughs> and I was still able to stay home. I was still able to be in my pajamas. So I operated my whole business out of my house. Um, in two years time, from the time that I started Baby Einstein, I got a phone call, my kitchen phone, because I was still at home. And it was Disney Publishing, and they said, you know, we know about your success, we understand that this is a new market, video for babies, and um, we would like to do a book line. Are you interested in licensing the name Baby Einstein? And I was like, hmm, let me see, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, in any case, so I said yes, started writing books for Disney Publishing, and then my business began to grow and grow and grow. Um, two years after that, we were um, in a really amazing place. We were in a tiny little office now. We weren't in our home anymore, um, but we were in a tiny little office where I still wore my pajamas. And um, we had five employees, myself included, and we did over $20 million in sales. Crazy, right? So that was just amazing. And it was, again, it was really based on something that I believed in so much. And that was what made it so cool. So again, the odds. I mean, what are the odds that something like that would happen? But had I not believed in myself, they certainly never would have happened. So, you know, this is how, <clears throat> excuse me, you might apply this to your own lives and your own ideas. Um, so, you know, the odds of all of these ha things happening were small. I was on Oprah. It was crazy. I was um, um, in the New York Times. I mean, there were all these write-ups that had to do with Baby Einstein and its success. But the most amazing thing, what are the odds? English major, Michigan State University. Yay! <laughs> um, but so, so, I mean, what are the odds of this happening? I swear it's supposed to be something. Oh, it's not supposed to be that, though. Should I push a button? Oh, let's see. Here we go. After her daughter was born, Julie Agner Clark searched for ways to share her love of music and art with her child. So she borrowed some equipment and began filming children's videos in her basement. The Baby Einstein Company was born, and in just five years, her business grew to more than $20 million in sales.
and she's using her success to help others. Producing child safety videos with John Walsh of the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Julie says of her new project, I believe it is the most important thing I have ever done. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> When I watch that, I'm still, it's just amazing to me. Um, so, so the odds of that happening, very small, but you have to take risks, you have to try these things. Um, what, what President Bush was um, alluding to was um, another company that I started after I sold Baby Einstein. So I did sell Baby Einstein to Disney in 2001. Um, it was an amazing thing and a wonderful thing that I'm very happy I did, despite the fact that there have been, you know, it's handled a little differently now than it was when it was five people in a, a little office. Um, but I'm very, very happy I did so. I, I do have to say that once I sold the company, I decided that I really wanted to do something that was giving back. And so I chose to start a series of videos called The Safe Side. And I worked with John Walsh from the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, who's the most amazing man. I think I've ever met, um, other than my great husband. Um, <laughs> but, um, but John is amazing. And so we worked to make videos that would help teach children how to stay safe. And we've been able to donate all of our proceeds to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Um, and so thus far, thank you. Um, so, so thus far, we're at a little over a quarter of a million dollars. And they're an amazing organization. Um, so that's fantastic. Um, and the odds of even meeting John were, were pretty small, but it happened. Um, so I had a lot of good luck. I worked really hard, too. Um, and I had amazing people that I worked with. Um, but in terms of defying the odds, I never worked harder. And um, probably never even wore my pajamas more than I did um, starting in 2004. I was diagnosed with breast cancer at the age of 37. And what are the odds? Like, they're really small, but I beat them again, sadly, this time. Um, <laughs> thank you. Um, so the chances of getting breast cancer between 30 and 40 are like 0.04%. So I got breast cancer, looked at the doctor. I said, you know, what are the odds that I can beat this? What do I need to do to get, to, to, to get over this? And um, she said, well, you know, you could do it, you could have a double mastectomy, and in that case, you only have a 2% chance that it's going to come back. And I was so happy. I was like, okay, well, certainly I'll do that. I mean, I'm, I'm definitely not going to get this back. But I wasn't thinking that I always beat the odds. So in 2008, I actually did get cancer back, even though it was gone for four years. It did come back. Um, when it came back in 2008, I was told that it was stage four. What are the odds? Really, really small. Um, so I had beat the odds again, but I looked at the doctor and I said, what do I need to do to, um, to beat the odds? And he said, well, there's a lot of stuff you can do, which I did. I fought really hard in my pajamas. Um, I did chemotherapy. I did surgery. I did more surgery. I did a clinical trial. I did all kinds of stuff. And, um, and I tried, just like you guys all need to try. God, it's so quiet in here, but it should be really happy because I'm cancer-free. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> and, you know, stage four is pretty serious business, so it was, it was a small chance. Um, but here I am, and I'm happy and great, and oh, so happy to be back in Michigan. Um, so, so I guess my ultimate comment to you guys is, that you can beat the odds. Um, it's great to practice thankfulness, to be thankful for all that we have and um, for all that we can do to help others, which so many people here are doing. It's so fantastic. I think Detroit is a place where people pick themselves up and, and really, you know, give each other a hand, and that's really, really cool. Um, and you won't always win, but when you do win, life is absolutely astounding. So thank you so much for having me here today.